We're doing something different today. We got some more microphone arms to check out. I was going to do a dedicated video on each of these at some point as they have been sent to me individually other than this one that I just bought. But honestly, I don't care about microphone arms enough to think that it's worth making a dedicated video on. So let's just do kind of an addendum to the microphone arm showdown with some new releases and one I just haven't looked at yet. I'm Eupus Fox, the stream professor, and I've reviewed a ton of streaming gear on the channel over the years, including microphone arms. I did a whole giant microphone arm showdown a few months ago. If you missed it, check the link in the description below. We cover a lot of the competing microphones or previous versions of these microphone arms that you were gonna be looking at today. Today we've got the Gator Frameworks weighted microphone stand that actually sits on your desk. I've actually seen this used for cameras and other things, which is the main reason I picked it up, but this video was a good reason to go ahead and open it up and review it. Anyway, we've got the microphone arm from 512 Audio. I reviewed their Limelight and Skylight microphones before. They also released a microphone arm with it, the 512 BBA. I didn't get around to talking about it. Again, microphone arms are dumb, so we're gonna be looking at it here. I will say out of all of these, every time I hit this box, there's clear a big springy rumbling to it that the other mic arms don't have. So the springs are probably a lot looser. It's gonna make a lot more noise. That's unfortunate. We got the Rode PSA-1 Plus, a spiritual successor to the legendary Rode PSA-1. I hated the Rode PSA-1. Everyone talks good about it. And while back in 2014, it was a great choice, these days, I don't get it, so I'm curious to see how they improved upon the formula. And then we have what just released today under embargo is the Avermedia Live Streamer Arm, which is their new low profile microphone arm. So this is a competitor to the Elgato Wave Arm LP. Now that I am super excited for. I think for a lot of people, low profile mic arms are the way to go. And we're finally getting some competition in that space because otherwise it's basically been yellow tech and they're super unaffordable. So this is sick. We also are going to mention the Deity mic arm that came with the VO7U podcast kit that I have off screen that we will just show as we go here. All right, first and foremost, I don't want to waste your time. Let's get into the exciting one, the new Avermedia mic arm. So Avermedia is getting a lot more serious about their peripheral streaming products. They've had obviously capture cards for a very long time. They've been innovating in their webcam scene as well. And they just released a microphone and an Elgato Stream Deck slash Wave XLR competitor. And admittedly, a lot of these side products haven't been doing super well, but they're still trying to build that bigger ecosystem that Elgato has kind of really locked down. And I appreciate that. We also have, they released a new pop filter for their AM330 uh, live streamer mic. Honestly, I don't like anything about that microphone at all. I hate to say it, I, I, I find good qualities about the Nexus and a lot of other things. The microphone, I'm not sold on, uh, but we have a little shock absorber ring here and to attach it to the microphone itself. And then we get just a lovely little custom fitted mesh pop filter. And there's a little arm to attach it to it. Not gonna cover this too much, but I love custom uh, pop filters like this because uh, they stay out of your way rather than the big fly swatters. I use a specific one on my Electro Voice microphones that is built specifically for them for that reason. So it's cool that they released this. It's just called the Avermedia pop filter. If you got their microphone, give it a check. You know, check it out. We care about this beautiful arm in here. Oh my goodness. I don't have pricing at the moment. I will show it on screen. There's been a lot of leaks and kind of pre-release hype for this kind of stuff because Avermedia is apparently terrible at keeping things secret. Like this was released in some design competition like almost a year ago or something now. And thankfully a lot of people didn't see it. I guess thankfully for Avermedia's sake. Um, so Avermedia can't keep a whole lot, a ton of secret. What is this? Oh, cable routing straps, I'm guessing. Allen wrench. All right, and the seller that was selling it early was selling it for 170 euros or pounds, which is very expensive for a microphone arm. But oh boy, look at this thing. This is kind of resemblant of the Gator Frameworks mic arms we were looking at before. This thing is clearly not designed after any of the existing microphone arm formats. Lots of times, like the DD mic arm, you know, it just kind of resembles the generic Inno gear format or whatever. This is all completely new to me. And as I mentioned with the design competition thing, this is all Avermedia's design. They have gone all in on designing a new microphone arm. And it is gorgeous. It's got the sleek black metal look. It's got cable channels with these little plastic things to hold it in. Oh, this is awesome. All right, uh, how do we get it? There we go. 
So thick little baby pin here to slot it into the desk mount, and we're just gonna we're gonna try each of these out as we go here. So it's got this lovely little uh, desk clamp. It doesn't have any branding on it, which I appreciate. Nice. It doesn't have the ratchet handle of something like the Elgato. Uh, mounting stuff, but that's fine. Lovely fitting handle. Rubber up under here, which I appreciate. No rubber ring around the metal ring though, which I don't like. And then they have a little cable clip as well, which is pretty sick. Only thick enough to hold like a USB cable though. All right. Attach that to our surface. And these boxes are getting cardboard shavings everywhere. Just slot that bad boy in. So, oh, okay. So we can do a standard. Where do we attach the? Oh, wait, what? No way. All right, this is sick. I have no idea if this is showing up on camera. The, this is the threaded tap. It rotates. Uh, that feels upside down. So this is the, I want to say three eighths threaded tap that you would screw your microphone onto, and they included a knob for it, so you can just push the microphone up against it and tighten it. No other microphone arm I've used has done this. This is incredible and a huge time saver. My only point of confusion is why it's sideways. Can the whole arm twist? No. It can go upside down or sideways the other way. Oh, wait a minute. We can rotate it. There we go. All right, I was gonna say, that's not gonna be very useful. All right, so we can still do the over, like, the monitor kind of mounting here. I don't think it's gonna be tall enough to get over most people's monitors, but you know, the, the standard height, like, monitor arm placement here, or microphone arm placement here, or we can get, there we go, down super low, go backwards, and now we've got a low profile mic arm that reaches places. Now, of course, you're gonna have to be very clever with your desk positioning for it. But you can mount stuff like anywhere you want. So you can get it like right up against you from a long distance, which I've heard complaints about, or you can get it like right up underneath you, or you can get like the exact angle you want to get it right up under you. So we're gonna do some weight tests. Obviously, there's an Allen wrench included here to actually tighten everything. All right, here we have the Electrovoice RE20 in black. <sighs> Shouts out to Electrovoice for sending this out for the new studio. We've got the pop filter on it and the Electrovoice 309A uh, shock mount on it. This is a heavy package. And the Elgato uh, Wavearm LP has not had any issues holding it overall. However, it has had an issue, uh, the, the multi-mount ball head thing sometimes struggles with it if I bounce it around too much. I'm becoming less of a fan of those ball head designs over the years, but it still works out for me for the most part. So we're going to see, obviously we can tighten it, but we're going to see how it handles the weight here. And oh my gosh, I don't have to spin, to spin the mic immediately. Well, if you get it lined up. That's kind of the game with it anyway. You know, with most mic arms, I got to spin it around a couple times to get it lined up. Okay, we're not getting it lined up at all. <laughs> As I talk about how great it is. I do this one, I'm trying to spin it on anyway. There we go. Oh, hell yeah. I am loving this. All right, so we're gonna get some sag initially, which is normal. Let's crack open this Allen wrench and get to work. Okay, it's got Phillips head on the other end as well. So we've got Allen key on this elbow and on this elbow. I don't know, I think it's this one that's sagging. Actually, depending on the angle you want, it's holding the weight. Yo, all right, let's get this angled up. Oh, angled up at me here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is awesome. Get your cable routed through there. All right, obviously we're getting a little bit of sag, but again, I've not tightened this at all, so. There we go, and then. I don't like that they're on opposite sides. I'm not sure I understand the point of that. There we go. Bounce, bounce, bounce. I'm impressed. Less impressed, okay. Uh, I don't know that there's a tightening mechanism for this particular part. Hmm. That's a problem if that's the case. Yeah, that falls, okay. 
we have a mount in this joint here as well. I don't, I think it only handles the X direction though. We're gonna see. Does this even fit? There we go. Crank that. Oh, I guess it does affect both. All right. Thumbs up. Like that is my weight test of like the heaviest mic situation most people are gonna do. Actually, I can do you one heavier, but it's gonna be risky. We're doing it for the gold. We're, we're, we're making a new mic heavy benchmark actually. I don't know which is heavier, so we will compare here. We've got the RE20. We've also got the $3,500 Lewitt LCT1040 with the shock mount. So we're putting a lot of risk going on here. Actually, I don't know which is heavier. It is hard to tell. They're also weighted differently. Like this gets mostly a center mass because of the yoke of the shock mount, whereas this is all weighted front. So this might be a better test. Oh, it screws in so much nicer too. All right. Microphone I can't afford to replace. Yes! All right, I'm sold. This is sick and you get all sorts of angles with this thing. Because now we can go studio style here, maybe. Of course, I've over tightened it, so now it doesn't want to bend, but that's normal. Hello there! All right, I'm good with this. I'm going to take the mic off now before I have a heart attack because I can't afford to replace this thing, but this is an incredible mic arm. Again, if it's 170 bucks, I don't know that it could possibly be worth it to most of you, because that is expensive for a microphone arm. Nothing compared to the to the yellow tech stuff, but still expensive. The Elgato Wave stuff is probably not too far from that. All right, let's check out Rode's latest microphone arm update, the PSA1 Plus. Now, the PSA1 has been out for probably a decade at this point and was the budget YouTuber's dream, well, not, maybe not budget, but YouTubers dream microphone arm because there wasn't a whole lot for a very long time that was great and reasonable. And the Rode PSA1 was great for that. But to me, it is super loose and not something I'm a huge fan of. So this is their improvement. I have an envelope. That seems rather formal. It's a professional studio arm. Smooth, ultra smooth movement, peerless stability no matter the angle. Well, that is definitely not how their first mic arm went, so that would be interesting. Neoprene protective sleeve, integrated cable management for XLR or USB cables. Holds any weight between 0.2 pounds and 2.7 pounds. All right, this on paper is a significant upgrade from the last one, because weight limits were in a very awkward point with the last one. Oh my. All right, I'm impressed. So they have their standard. Let's get this open. They have their standard desk clamp mount system that they've used for many of their mics. Uh, this does look a little bit upgraded. You've got rubber pads on both sides. The handle has little rubber tips so you don't hurt yourself, I guess. Otherwise, it looks about the same. But they also include the threaded through desk mount, which not a lot of people in the streaming space go for. I will say, build your own desks and build desks that you're comfortable modifying and you're gonna be way happier with your setup. I have built all of my desks. But that is actually very premium looking for what it is and then you've got a hole for your cables as well. So you gotta drill yourself a pretty massive hole, that's what she said, for the threaded here and then you'll wanna drill yourself a second hole for the cables, but, and those are not very far apart so maybe you just want one giant hole. I'm not really sure. I'm not doing that right now. All my talk about being comfortable to do that, I don't really have a setup where I can do that right now. Well, I could, but it would disrupt what I already have going. All right. What? Caution, spring loaded, open with care. Yeah, I got that. How do I get the cardboard off? There we go. Okay. Whee! Get out of here. Okay. This is premium. They weren't kidding. You got like a super clothy kind of, I guess neoprene is what they called it, sleeve over the arm, which makes it look a lot more professional out of the box. 
you've got an improved baby pin at the bottom. You've got cable management channels as well. Oh, and this head on this thing, that sounds really inappropriate. You've got all the different converters involved. You've got multiple dials. This is the, the attachment head for the Rode PSA-1 to attach your microphone to the actual microphone arm was one of the parts I hated the most about that previous microphone arm. This thing is insane. All right, this is badass. So far, this, the Rode mic arm beats the Elgato Wave arm, the big one for me. The Avermedia, I think, competes favor very favorably with the Elgato Wave Arm LP. I think the Wave Arm LP is better than the Avermedia arm if you just want low profile, but if you want the flexibility of both, this Avermedia arm is incredible. And this new Rode PSA-1 is definitely my new favorite over the Elgato, other than there's no riser arm. So I'm an over-the-monitor guy with my if I'm gonna mount a microphone overhead, and I can't do that here. Uh, so... No riser arm is a big disappointment for me. I would much rather have that included myself rather than the uh, the through hole mount for the desk. All right, we'll attach our poor RE20 here on these thick knobs to adjust the tension. This is a significant upgrade. Like, I realize I'm one of the few people who hates on the Rode PSA-1 as much as I do, whereas most people are fine with it. Wait, does this tighten into the... Ah, oh, you geniuses! Same thing as the Avermedia arm. Although it's currently just tightening through the threaded adapter, but we'll get there. You got a tightening knob to tighten it into the microphone. I don't know who decided it was cool letting us spin out our microphones for this long, but it ain't cool. Although, currently it's just tightening through the 5 8 adapter. We're not actually getting into the microphone. At all. Uh... It's really hard to get these lined up like perfectly parallel and even and actually start threading. There we go. Yes. All right. These new mic arms, this this feature alone stands both of these mic arms above any competition, old or new for me. All right. Weight wise, we are good. Ladies and gentlemen, this beat, I, I think uh, what I was going to say a minute ago is I, I realize I'm one of the few people who looks down as much as I do on the original Rode PSA-1. But I think they did a disservice by still using that name for this. The PSA-1 Plus makes, sounds like a smaller upgrade, whereas this is leaps and bounds better. Look at that. Whoop. I'm going to hit the lens. Whoop. Whoop. My gosh. And then, of course, we can tighten this bad boy up. Oh, yeah. And you still got the through hole through the metal arm as well. If you cut your own XLR cables, you can actually integrate it into the arm itself if you like as well. They did not leave that out. All right, again, I don't know pricing. It'll be on screen, but both of these are incredibly compelling. We've got two more to look at here. Oh, I got to take the mic, mic back off. This poor RE20 gets so much abuse. All right, these are going to be quick and easy because these are cheap and I'm not a huge fan already just by looking at them. This is the 512 BBA. It has the microphone arm from 512 Audio. I wasn't a huge fan of either of their microphones, but they do offer some budget options and we are looking a, at a standard fare Amazon mic arm. I'm going to put this message out here to both Deity and 512 Audio. You do not need your own microphone arm for the sake of having a microphone arm. Put in your name. I'm not a product manager. Maybe I don't understand the value of offering the complete package or whatever. Personally, as a reviewer and someone who has shopped for a lot of these things before I reviewed them, putting your name on an existing product and that's not very good, just to have your name on it, it's just doing damage to your brand rep for no reason, in my opinion. Yeah, this is like super standard fare Amazon junk, honestly. It's got their name on it. It's the stand. It's it's very tall, so it's like taller than most of these. I don't know what you call the style, but the style of scissor arm. It's got their logo on it up here, and it's got the th five eighths and three eighths inch converter, or maybe that's quarter twenty. Oh, that's really tense. It's gonna stay in place though. We'll still do the weight test. We gotta be fair to all the mics. Uh, we gotta take this adapter off first. 
So I always complain about these arms coming with these adapters because I've never seen a mic that actually uses that natively, but those adapters make it a lot easier to mount cameras to these things. So if you want like webcam angles or top-down cameras or whatever, you do have that ability to. All right. RE20 test. That ain't going anywhere. Ooh, Ooh that didn't sound good. <laughs> I don't know what just cracked there. Uh, like fishing, basically. I wonder how bad this would look trying to use it as like a jib for a camera. Like if I could hold my hand steady enough and get the right momentum where it's not already shaky moving forward, like if I pull it back here, have a camera mounted upside down, pointed at something and go, Shoop. I wonder if that could be a cool shot. That's a video for a future day. Subscribe if you like that idea. I don't know what cracked. It's gonna hold a lot of weight and it's tight enough that a lightweight microphone isn't gonna fall off of it either. I don't have anything else nice to say about it. It's fine. It's nowhere near as exciting as these innovative ones, but hey, it does the job. And that's all that really matters, I guess, sometimes. It did come with cable straps as well. Ah! All right, final one we have to unbox and then we'll go pull over the DD mic for our conclusion. This is from Gator Frameworks, who makes some more higher end kind of microphone arms and radio station kind of accessories and things like that. We reviewed a couple of their more expensive mic arms on the channel during the mic arm showdown. This is a mic stand for your desk. So it's a little different in purpose. Like I said, I was just looking for an excuse to finally open it up and talk about it on camera, get that ROI. But I think the real value in this one is its alternate uses as a camera stand wherever you needed to go. Got their logo on the front of it there if you're into that. That is a hefty weight with a lovely thick ass rubber gasket along the bottom. It ain't sliding anywhere and it's not hurting your desk, which I love. And then to attach your actual microphone to, we just have a very standard fare telescoping like mic arm situation. Actually, I say standard fare. Standard fare instead of format, in terms of format, this thing is high quality as hell. It's completely modular, so this part unscrews from the elbow, this part telescopes out. You might even have a second layer, layer here, probably not. But you got the full telescoping mechanism, the whole head detaches from the arm. You got this rubber grip, you've got cable management clips. Big old rubber head back here. This is really premium. Spinny, 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 spin, spin, spin. It's called lazy screwing. All right, let me get the angle we want. Get the telescope. Yeah, I dig it. Does this telescope more or is it just tightening the mic arm? It's just tightening the mic arm. All right, this is gonna be an awkward angle. Get in there. There we go. All right, fully telescoped out. I don't know what this would be pointing at, but fully out, it's not gonna hold an RE20 at all. It's not what it's built for really, but. Uh, that doesn't weigh as much as I expected. All right, and then real quick, I just wanna show off, I already talked about it in the mic review. Yep, that's gonna fall, great. I take this back off. This is the Deity mic arm that came with the VO7U microphone podcast kit. The review of the microphone is already up on my channel if you want to check it out. It has the desk clamp very similar to Rhodes style, but they included a headphone hanger on the end, which is some nice extra utility. And then otherwise it's the same as the 512 audio mic arm in basically every way. So. Like, it's good quality, but it's nothing spectacular. 
I will say, I don't know if they sell it on its own, but it's only a $30 upgrade with the microphone, so if you're buying that anyway, it's pretty good value for that, but again, nothing special. In terms of my favorites of the new releases, it's gotta go to the Yaver Media and the Rode. The Rode is such an incredible change of pace compared to the original PSA1, in terms of weight supports, in terms of features, premium touches on literally everything. Absolutely phenomenal. If you want the standard scissor arm, I am still super disappointed that we don't have a riser arm option. If you want something low profile or just for funky angles in general, as I like play twister with these or something, this Aver, this new Aver Media live streamer mic arm is incredible. But again, you're paying a lot for these, so that choice will be yours. Just like your choice whether you check out our sponsor or not. I don't even know if we have a sponsor for this video. Surprise! The sponsor's me. It, it, me. Did you know I do stream consultation stuff? We have a whole community on my Discord server dedicated to providing detailed stream feedback, thumbnail and title generation for YouTube, feedback on your videos, all sorts of integrated stuff, including just what I call the classroom chat that is just deep dives on specific topics or trending conversations about content creation and live streaming. This is available exclusively for my Discord premium subscribers. All of my, you know, fan funding stuff I've now funneled into Discord. I have two primary uh, premium membership tiers over on Discord. If you want to join, you can get early access to videos, behind the scenes content, but you also get this tightly integrated group of like-minded creators dedicated to helping each other make the best content you can. So that's discord.gg slash eposvox. Go check it out. Product links, as always, to all of these will be in the description down below, as will be the link to my microphone arm reviews playlist or other videos. I'm doing crazy mad scientist stuff today. Remember, be kind, rewind.